is that bitch hammies? It is approximately 5.50 a.m. I was supposed to leave at 5.30, so I'm running a little late, but I'm going to meet up with Chris. We're going to a lake that neither of us have carp fish before, which is pretty sweet. Now that it's summertime, pretty much, I'll be testing out a lot of new lakes. One of uh, the fish homies on Instagram, though, hit me up and said he's been fishing there and he's been having pretty darn good luck. Shout out to you, Alex. Freaking A, man. Hopefully we get one today. Anyways, homies, I'm on the road. I'm tired. I'm going crazy. So I'll catch up with you in a little bit. All right, guys. Chris just hooked up on a good one. It took a huge run. And then all of a sudden got stuck on the bottom. We didn't know what was going on. Tightened the old drag. It popped off. Reeled it in with another person's line on it. It was like a drop shot with a little weight and stuff so that definitely popped the hook on whatever was on the end of his line but it's definitely something good and it was only like 45 minutes so we'll get another one soon. I also got a good bite when he was catching one or fighting it and then he got another bite so it's looking good. Rig of choice today. A little quarter fake pop-up corn topped with a little mainline boily pop-up bang bang. Alright guys got one on. He's going crazy. Are you down to go on the other side of me? I think I'll be able to net him too. Don't go in the other rod. Like a boss. I got it, yeah. Thanks, bro. <laughs> Alright, guys. Got this nice little guy. He's got some weird sores on him. I don't know if you can see, but it's on the other side. I'll show you. Been here for about 45 minutes. Chris missed one. And then we got this one pretty in close, like 15 yards out only. So let me show you the other side so you can see that weird sore. That weird sore on him. We're not gonna weigh him because he's probably he's not I don't know if he's even 10 pounds, but let's get him back in there. Alright, cart. Sweet. <laughs> Alright guys, something horrible happened. My freaking hook snapped. Look at that. It's these freaking mugga hooks. If you get these pre-tied Ronnie rigs from, uh, I forget what, where they're from, I'll, I'll remember, but don't get the ones with the mugga hooks because they're super thin and they snap. That was definitely a good fish that I just missed. That sucks. The pre-tied Ronnie rigs that the hook snapped on was Gardner Tackle pre-tied Ronnie rigs from Big Carp Tackle. So don't buy those unless you want to snap your hook. My uh, friend Jeff up north had the same thing happen to him like a month or two ago. So now it's confirmed that those hooks are pretty weak. I think it's a mugga hook. If you get the continental mugga, I think it's a little stronger, but be careful. All right, guys, hooked up on a white koi. I think I'm tangled in Chris's line. Hopefully I can land him. Dude, I'm so excited. Yeah. Dude, it's a good one. Yeah, I, I can get it from here. You got it? Yeah, I got it. It's like a koi cart. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. All right. Got him. Oh, oh. <laughs> Chilling, bro. Just hooked up on a nice koi or koi carp. I'm not sure, to be honest. We're going to get a weight on him. My alarm's going off. So he's 20.5, 20 20.5, and the sling's about a pound, maybe two, so he's 18 or 19 pounds. Personal best koi for me, for sure. Check this fish out. <laughs> <laughs> it's not 
very happy. All right, there we go. That's one of the nicest looking fish I've ever caught. Super bright tail, nice big fight with them. Let's see if we can get a good picture. Yeah, that's a good one though. That's good? Yeah. All right, so yeah, he's like 18, 19 pounds. Try and get him back for a nice release. Always remember to catch and release, guys, and don't burn the spots. Whoop, there we go. Let's get him in the sling and get him back in there. All right, guys, he put up a good fight, so he might take a minute to get out of there. Now he's ready to go. So oh, yeah. Nice and perfect to get bigger. Knuckles. <laughs> Picked up again. Small one. Oh, he's strong. Oh my god. <laughs> Here, but yeah. Nice. Look at this bruiser. He's angry. I think he's probably about nine, ten pounds. So I think that's like two around ten, and then that one eighteen. They all got weird sores on them. I don't know if you can see where it went. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's right there. So I don't know what's in here. Like maybe big leeches or something. But this guy's ready to go back. So we'll slide him in. Nice to here. He's ready to get out. There you go. Boom. Yeah. One thing we did a little different that time was we put the carp in the waist thing and let it sit in the water. And I recasted my rod right on top of it before we took pictures. So sometimes when they're eating good like this and they're competing for food, it's good to get your rod back out quicker than you think. Better than taking pictures and waiting. You might miss a bite if you do that. On another one about five minutes later. It's coming right into shore. Oh, another small one. Oh, it's a koi again, bro. Another small koi. It's like a two pounder. Oh, baby. For people that say koi don't fight, you are tripping. This little koi is fighting harder than the, than the big ones. Hang on, he's to the right. This guy is crazy. All right, hell yeah. All right, this feisty little koi here. It's probably about a pound or two. He fought harder than that big 17, 18 pounder though. This guy's a freaking champion. You can see his nice and gold colors. Little nice orange on the bottom. We'll get him back. He's gone. Got all the drop back bite, guys. That's why the gear is so important. Oh. Too far. Hang on, hang on. Strong one. Here, put it down. Nice. Alright guys, just hooked up on this beast right here. It's definitely a breeding male. He's super pissed. And you can see the little turbicules or whatever you call them on his face. You see like little white bumps all over their face? That's how you know it's a breeding male so maybe I'll get a little close-up of it for you guys not very big though maybe like five pounds there you can kind of see the little white spots I was talking about right on his face right here that's how you know it's a breeding male or a male ready to breed that's they use that and rub up against the females to get them ready to lay eggs so we know they're breeding in here recently not a big one but that's pretty cool 
Let me show you what we've had the good luck with so far. That last one was on a double corn, a big uh, white piece of corn and a, and a small yellow piece of corn. So that's working, but the, all the other fish have come off these little mainline pop-ups. Let me show ya. All right, so these are it right here. The essential cell flavor. They're floral pop-ups, so you can see they're pink and white. These are the eight mils. I like the eight and the 10 mils. Thank you to Chris for these, he gave them to me. Without them, we wouldn't be catching them today, eh? Another thing I wanted to mention before I forget is the tournament is gonna start next Monday. I don't know the exact date, but I think it's the, the 20th today. So I think uh, the 27th or 28th, let me check here. Yeah, the 27th, the tournament will start. So May 27th, and it's gonna be on the iCatch app. So check that out, and next week we'll get it started. I'll probably do another video before then, explain it a little better. But get the app, check it out, see how you like it. And hopefully next Monday, we'll get it going. Also, if you freaking go in those paddle boats on these lakes, don't go close to shore and go in everyone else's line. Some dude just blew out both my lines just going real close to us. So be wary of that.